Hello and welcome to this video for the 2021 level 3 complex numbers exam. So for this exam, um, I do not actually have the marking schedule like my previous couple of videos. So I do not know the individual gradings for each question, but I will try my best to give an estimate of the grade that will be applicable for each question. Also, um, there is a disclaimer that there is a possibility that I do make some uh, mistakes during this exam, which I would appreciate if I do make a mistake that you pointed out in the comments below. Uh, without further without further ado, let's try my best to go through this exam. So question one A. Given that W equals to D plus 5i and Z equals to 3 minus 4i, find the value of D if WZ equals to 38 minus 9i. Alright, for this question, we're just simply going to multiply W and Z together, and then we're going to make the real part is equal to the real part, and then the imaginary parts equal to the imaginary parts, and solve for D. So in this case, wz equals to d plus 5i multiplied by 3 minus 4i. And now simply we're just going to expand out. So that's going to be equal to 3d minus 4di and plus 15i. And 5i times negative 4i is negative 20i squared. i squared is positive, oh sorry, it's negative 1. So that becomes positive 20. So this simplifies to 20 plus 3d. So I'm just going to group the real parts and I'm going to group the imaginary parts together. And this will be plus 15 minus 4d times of i. And that's equal to 38 minus 9i. So therefore we can see that 20 plus 3d equals to 38 and 15 minus 4d equals to negative 9. So therefore we can see that d is equal to 18 over 3, which is 6. And if we try 6 into our second expression, so 15 minus 4 times 6 is 15 minus 24, which is negative 9. So that's indeed our answer. So D value is 6. And a correct answer, this should just be a simple achieve level question. If Z equals to 2 plus 3i, show, about 26, show 26 over Z on the IGAN diagram below. So for this question, we're just going to divide by 26 over z, and then we're going to multiply by the conjugate in order to get our result. So 26 over z, that's equal to 26 over 2 plus 3i. And we're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 2 minus 3i over 2 minus 3i. And that's going to give us, on the top, we're going to multiply through. So we're going to have 52 minus 78i divided by the denominator, which will be 2 squared plus 3i times negative 3i, which is positive 9. Alright, so that's going to give us 52 minus 78i over 13, and that's going to give us 4 minus 6i. So 4 minus 6i, we can just look, the real part is positive 4, so that's on the x-axis, and we have negative 6i on the y-axis, so if we find this will be right And that's our final answer for this question. And we just leave it like this. We should get an achieved grade for finding the correct answer. Question C. The polynomial f of x equals to the x cubed plus 3x squared plus ax plus b. It has the same remainder when divided by x minus 2 as it does when divided by x plus 1. The polynomial f of x also has x plus 2 as a factor. So in this case, we're just going to be using the remainder theorem. So in this case, since x plus 2 is a factor, we know that f of negative 2 is equal to 0. And we know that the same remainder, we'll call it r, will remain when this f of x is divided by x minus 2 and or divided by x plus 1. So in this case, we know that f of 2 is equal to f of negative 1. Right, so we know, so let's just use our first statement here. So f of negative 2 is 0. So we say that 0 is equal to negative 2 cubed plus 3 times of negative 2 squared minus 2a plus b. So 0 equals to negative 8 plus negative 2 squared is positive 4, so plus 12 minus 2a plus b. And that simplifies to 4 minus 2a plus b. And that equals to 0. Uh, now we can use our second statement in order to find another expression relating a and b, and we can solve simultaneously to find a and b. So f of 2 is equal to f of 1, so f of 2 is equal to 2 cubed plus 3 times 2 squared plus 2a plus b. That simplifies to 8 plus 2 squared is 4 
times 3 is 12, so that's 5 through 20, plus 2a, plus b. And that's equal to f of negative 1, so we're going to write f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed, plus 3 times of negative 1 squared, minus a, plus b. And that simplifies to negative 1 plus 3 minus a plus b, which is 2 minus a plus b. So therefore, we can say that 20 plus 2a plus b is equal to 2 minus a plus b. And that gives us 18 is equal to. So if we try to group the variables onto one side, so we say that this is equal to negative 3a and b's cancel out by the looks of it. Yeah. Yep, so therefore a is equal to negative 6. And we can use this to find b, so therefore we can say uh, 4 minus 2a plus b equals to 0. So 4 minus 2 times negative 6 plus b equals to 0. Oops. So therefore 4 plus 12 plus b equals to 0. Therefore b must be equal to negative 16. Alright, so I believe this should be a merit level question and getting... Both A and B will be a merit. Getting just one of them should be an achieved. <laughs> Alright, so show that if Z equals to 1 plus 3i, then the argument of Z minus 1 over Z minus 2i is equal to pi over 4. Alright, so in this case, we're just going to find an expression for Z minus 1 over Z minus 2i. So in this case, we know that Z is equal to 1 plus 3i. So therefore, z minus 1 equals to 3i by itself, and z minus 2i is equal to 1 plus i. So this simplifies to 3i over 1 plus i, and we should multiply by the conjugate to get a real denominator. So we have 1 minus i and 1 minus i, and that's going to give us 3i. Negative i times 3i is negative 3i squared, which becomes positive 3, all over 1 squared plus uh, sorry, 1 squared plus uh, i times, which is 1. So this is equal to 3i plus 3 over 2. And that's equal to 3i over 2 plus 3 over 2. Let me just check that one. So 3i. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And we want to prove that the argument is pi over 4. So if you draw out our argand diagram, I recommend you do so for any questions involving the argument so you can better visualize the situation. So we have our real on our x-axis and imaginary on our y-axis. So pi over 4, that's positive and less than pi over 2. So therefore, this is in quadrant 1. So that's in this section here. So that's our real. That's sorry, that's our um that will be our z minus one over z minus two i and we want to find this angle theta. So therefore we know that tan theta is equal to the imaginary part over the real part. In this case it will be three over two over three over two. And we know that tan inverse of one is equal to theta, and therefore theta is equal to forty-five degrees, or if you want to do it in radians, that would therefore be pi over four radians. So that's as required as we have proved what was required. So therefore this would be a merit level grade. To get an achieved if you can find and find the conjugate as uh, I multiply by the conjugate to get your real denominator. So in this form you should get an achieved. Given that the real part of z minus 2i over z minus 4 is 0, prove that the locus of points described by z is given by the Cartesian equation x minus 2 whole thing squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 5, which is a circle. So in this case, we're just going to say uh, let our z be equal to x plus iy. And we can just say that uh, this expression, we can rewrite this expression as x minus iy minus 2i over x plus iy minus 4. And we can group the imaginary and the real terms together. So we have x plus y minus 2i over x minus 4 plus yi. In order to get a real, uh, sorry, to get a real denominator, uh, we can multiply by the conjugate, which in this case is x minus 4 minus yi over x minus 4 minus yi. And that's equal to 
uh, we can just multiply through, just be careful don't to make any mistakes. So we multiply through, so we have x times x minus 4 on the top, minus y xi plus x minus 4 times y minus 2i. And we also have negative y times y minus 2i squared all over x minus 4 squared and then plus y squared. All right, so let's simplify this expression a little bit. So we have, expanding out the brackets, we have x squared minus 4x minus yxi plus x minus 4 times y minus 2i. And the i squared becomes negative 1, so that becomes positive y times y minus 2 all over x minus 4 squared plus y squared. And we know that the real part is 0, so we do not need, we can just simply just ignore the imaginary part since the question does not focus on the imaginary part. It's just telling us that the real part of this particular expression is 0. So that gives us a lot of information. So we know that all the real parts is the part that contains it without an i. So in this case, we can say that x squared minus 4x plus y times y minus 2 all over x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals to 0. And therefore, we can say that x squared minus 4x plus y times of y minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, now all that's left is that we need to uh, complete the square and to get, uh, hopefully we can get this Cartesian equation. So in this case, we can say this is 4x here. So to complete the square, half of 4 is 2. So we can say this is equal to x minus 2 squared. And we can say this is expanding out the brackets here. We get y squared minus 2y. And remember, what uh, when you do x minus 2 squared, you, you get x squared minus 4x plus 4. So if you add 4 to the left-hand side, you also need to add 4 on the right-hand side. So this is now equal to 4. Similarly, we can do the same for the y expression here. So we have x minus 2 squared plus half of negative 2 is negative 1. So we have y minus 1 squared. And that equals to 4. And 1 squared is 1 plus 1. So this equals to x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared, which equals to 5. And that is as required, as we can see in our Cartesian equation, we have got as required. That should be an excellent level grade. To get a merit level grade, if you can be able to get up to the uh, real part equals to 0, that should be a merit. So if you can rationalize up to this part, that should be fine for a merit. To get an achieve level grade, if you can simply show some evidence of multiplying by the conjugate, that should be an achieved. Somewhere around here should be an achieved. Question two, given that u equals to two i and w equals to two cis of two pi over three, find the expression for u over w. So since we have w in our cis form, we also need to convert u equals 2i into our cis form, which is, uh, which if you don't know, is cos theta plus i sine theta. So for these types of questions, we're trying to convert something. I always recommend you draw the Gan diagram and then you see where the complex number approximately lies. So this is our imaginary axis, this is our real axis. u equals to 2i is imaginary and it's not real, so the real part is 0, and the imaginary part is positive 2. So it will be somewhere here. That will be u. So in this case, we write the cis form in terms of this is our modulus, and this will be our argument. So the angle, as you can see here, is actually pretty clearly, we can see it's 90 degrees, or it's pi over 2. And we know that the distance to the origin is 2. So therefore, we can say that u is equal to 2, oops, sorry, it's equal to, 2 cis of pi over 2 and therefore u over w becomes very simple since all we need to do is divide the modulus and subtract the angles so therefore z is equal to 2 cis of pi over 2 divided by 2 cis of 2 pi over 3 that's equal to 1 cis of pi over 2 minus 2 pi over 3 and that gives us cis of negative pi over 6. And I believe we can just leave our answer in this form. Okay, so that's our z value. And that should be an achieve grade there. Solve the equation x squared equals, oh, sorry, x squared minus 12qx plus 20q squared equals 0 for x in terms of q, expressing any solutions in the form. 
So in this case, we're simply going to use the quadratic formula. So b uh, x equals 2, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And in this case, our a value is 1, b is equal to negative 12q, and c equals to 20q squared. So x equals 2, negative b is 12, positive 12q, 12 plus or minus b squared, which is 144q squared, minus 4 times of a times of c. And all over 2a, which is 2. So x equals 2, 6q, plus or minus 1 half of, square root of, 144q squared minus 80q squared, which is 64q squared. So therefore, x is equal to 6q plus or minus 1 half of 8q. So x equals to 6q plus or minus 4q. So x equals to 10q, x equals to 2q. And that's our final answer for this question, which should be another achieved grade there. Prove that a plus bi over b minus ai is purely imaginary and a and b are real constants. So once again, we have imaginary in our denominator, so we're going to multiply by the conjugate to get a real denominator. So we have a plus bi over b minus ai times b plus ai over b plus ai. And if we expand through, we'll get ab and times a times ai, which is plus a squared i plus b squared i and sorry and we have ai times bi which is negative a b all over b squared plus a squared and we see that a negative a b and positive a b cancel out so all we'll have left with is a squared plus b squared over uh, a squared plus b squared i sorry that's actually equal to just i which is purely imaginary And we've proved it correctly, so therefore this should be a merit level grade. To get an achieved, if you show some evidence of multiplying by the conjugate, that could warrant an achieved grade. Somewhere there. Somewhere. Solve the equation z cubed equals to k to the power of 6 plus k to the power of 6i. k is a real constant. Alright, so first we've got to change this thing to our cis form, okay, so we can find our three solutions to this equation. So first thing we can do, we can see we can factor out k to the power of 6. So z cubed equal to k to the power of 6 times 1 plus i. And we can convert 1 plus i into its cis form. Once again, we draw out our Aragon diagram. We have our real and imaginary. And we know that 1 plus i will be somewhere around here. So the modulus of 1 plus i is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared square root, which is square root of 2. And the angle would be tan inverse of 1, which is pi over 4. Alright, so in this case, we can rewrite this as z cubed equals to square root of 2, k6, cis of pi over 4. Alright, and then if we take the third root on both sides, we can say that the first solution is equal to square root of 2, k to the power of 6, to the power of 1 over 3, cis of the angle divided by 3, which is pi over 12. And now what we need to do, all we need to do to find the other three solutions is add 2k pi, 2k pi over n, in this case n is 3, so in this case we can just say we're adding, for each revolution we're adding 2 pi over 3 to our angle to find our solutions. So z1 we can simplify this a little bit, we can say z1 is equal to square root of 2 to the power of 1 third times k squared cis of pi over 2, sorry pi over 12. So z2 will be the same modulus, so we have square root of 2 to the power of 1 third k squared cis of pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3, which is 3 pi over 4, and therefore our third solution will be square root of 2 to the power of 1 over 3, k squared, cis of 3 over 4 pi plus 2 pi over 3, which is 17 pi over 12. And that should be our final answer for this question. Let me just double check. Um, 17. 
Right, that's actually our final answer, and that should be a Mert braid. If you can write your Z in terms of the cis form, that should be an achieved. That should be enough evidence for an achievement. Question E. If Z is a complex number and the modulus of Z plus 16 equals to 4 times the modulus of Z plus 1, find the value of the modulus of Z. So once again, for these questions, we're going to let Z be equal to X plus IY. So therefore, by definition, the modulus of z is square root of x squared plus y squared. That's our final, final target equation, is square root of x squared plus y squared. Uh, we can say that the modulus is x plus 16 plus y i is equal to 4 times of x plus 1 times of y i. And we can rewrite this in terms of its uh, modulus, the square root of x plus 16 squared plus y squared equal to 4 times the square root of x plus 1 squared plus y squared. Now we need to square both sides, so we have x plus 16 squared plus y squared equals to 16 times x plus 1 squared plus y squared. Alright, so now we just need to expand our brackets. We have x squared plus 32x plus 256 plus y squared. That is equal to... 16 times of x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 16 y squared. And we have x squared plus 32x uh, plus 256 plus y squared equals to 16x squared plus 32x plus 16 plus 16 y squared. Alright, so 32x and 32x will cancel out. We have 256 on the left-hand side, and then that's going to be equal to 15x squared plus 15y squared. Oh, sorry, and just 16 over there as well, sorry. So, we have um, 256 minus 16 equals to 15x squared plus 15y squared. So, therefore, x squared plus y squared equals to... 240 divided by 15, which is 16. So therefore, square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And keep in mind, this is the modulus of z, so we need to eliminate the negative value. So this is strictly positive, okay? So 4 is our answer. Uh, plus or negative 4, that is incorrect, okay? Uh, only We only take, only take the positive. Only take positive 4. As this is the modulus, okay? It's referring which is a strictly positive here. So we have positive 4 as our final answer for this question. This should be an excellence level question. To get a merit level grade, um, um, achieved it could be up to this step here, just being able to understand the simple definition of modulus. If you want to get a merit grade, I guess you need to be able to get at least up to somewhere here, I would say, to get a merit. But I'm not too sure. Not too sure. Alright, so moving on to question 3. The complex number u equals to 5 plus mi has the modulus of u equals to 6. Given that the argument is between pi over 2 and 0, find the exact value of the real number m. So, argument between pi over 2 and 0, so it's somewhere in quadrant 1. Okay, so it's somewhere in quadrant 1, so we know. And we know that the modulus of u is 6. So, therefore, we can say that the modulus of u is equal to square root of 5 squared plus m squared, and that is equal to 6. So 36 equals to 5 squared plus m squared. So 36 equals to 25 plus m squared. m squared equals to 11. m equals plus or minus 11. But keep in mind, we know that it's the, um, the m is, sorry, not m. u is in quadrant number 1. So therefore, both the real and the imaginary is positive. So therefore, we eliminate eliminate m equals to negative square root of 11 since uh, since um, u is in quad 
quadrant one. So we say m is therefore equal to positive square root of 11. And that should be our final answer, which should just be in a g of a grade. Alright, so write 18 over 4 minus 2 root 3 in the form a plus b root 3, where a and b are integers. So we just need to multiply by, again, the conjugates. We have 18 over 4 minus 2 root 3 times 4 plus 2 root 3 over 4 plus 2 root 3. And that is equal to 18 times 4, which is 72, plus 36 root 3 divided by 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 times root 3 times 2 root 3. So negative, sorry, so negative 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So this gives us 72 plus 36 root 3 over 4, which is 18 plus 9 root 3. Let me just check this one. Yeah, 18 plus 9 root 3, that's our final answer, which should be a cheap level. One solution of z uh, 4z cubed minus 19z squared plus 128z plus a equals to 0 is 2 plus 5i. If a is real, find the value of a and the other two solutions. So by the root theory, we know that if 2 plus 5i is a root, therefore 2 z equals to 2 minus 5i is also a root. So therefore we can say that um, you can say this will be, oh sorry, we're doing z. So one root is uh, 2 plus 5i, one is 2 minus 5i, so we can say z minus 2 minus 5i multiplied by z minus 2 plus 5i multiplied by z plus c, that is equal to this target expression on the left hand side. So z minus 2 plus 5i multiplied by z minus 2 minus 5i times z plus c. Right, so since we have the conjugate of 2 plus 5i multiplied together, any imaginary parts we can just ignore in our expansion. So z times z is z squared, negative 2 times z is negative 2z, and 5i times z is negative 5iz, but we can ignore that. Minus 2z, 2 times 2 is 4, and our next one would be 2, that's imaginary. And negative 5i times 5i is negative 25i squared, which is positive 25. And we can simplify this. So we have z squared minus 4z plus 29 multiplied by z plus c. So this will continue to simplify to z cubed minus 4z squared plus 29z plus cz squared minus 4cz. 29c. Alright, if we can simplify this even further, we can say z cubed minus 4z squared plus cz squared plus 29z minus 4cz plus 29c. And we can make um, the coefficients equal to each other, so negative 4 plus c equals to negative 19, so therefore we know that c is equal to negative 15. So we can try this one, so get 15, 29, cz, 4, um, okay, so, um, negative 4 plus c, 19, we have 29z minus 4zc. We should be getting positive 128c for that one. So 29z minus 4 times of negative 50. Yeah, that's not quite. So I must have made a mistake somewhere. Just, um, so we have z squared. z squared minus 2z. Minus 2z plus 4. Plus 
Ja. Plus 29z, we have c z squared minus 4zc plus 29c. Um, plus 128z, okay. Oh, yes, okay, I realized what I've been doing wrong. Okay, sorry, I've totally forgotten that there's a 4 at the start here. Oh, okay, okay, my bad. Alrighty, so apologies for that one. So we just gotta um, start a bit again again. Okay, so this first part is fine, but then we just need to add the 4z at the start there because the co uh, coefficient of a, uh, of a is 4. Did not see that, apologies. So this should be 4, 4, and 4. Alright, so starting fresh, we have 4z cubed plus cz squared minus 16z squared uh, minus 4zc plus 29 times 4, 116z plus 29c. Alright, that should be better now. So therefore, we can say c minus 16 is equal to negative 19. And therefore, c is equal to negative 3. And we can say that uh, we can just double check. So 116 minus 4 times the negative 3 should be 129, 28. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So C is negative 3. And therefore, we know that A would be A here is equal to 29C. So therefore, A is equal to 29 times negative 3, which is negative 87. And we want to find the other two solutions to the equation. So therefore, we know that 4z minus 3 equals to 0. 4z equals to 3. z equals to 3 over 4. So we have z equals to 3 over 4. z equals to 2 minus 5i. And z equals to 2 plus 5i. So getting all of this should be a merit grade. To get an achieved grade, um, if you can find maybe a to a value, that would be an achieved Solve the following equation for x in terms of m. Alright, so these questions, are all you need to do is just eliminate the square roots by squaring both sides and then possibly doing it again. So in this case, we're going to square the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we're going to have 6 square root of 2x minus 5 squared equals to 36 times 2x plus m. This will give us 36 times 2x plus 25 minus... Uh, <coughs> 2 times of 30 root 2x. So 36 times 2x is 72x plus 25 minus 60 root 2x is equal to 72x plus 36m. So 72x and 72x is eliminated and we'll have negative 60 root 2x is equal to 36m minus 25. So 3,600, if we square both sides again, we have, oh, sorry. 3,600 times 2x is equal to 36m minus 25 squared. So therefore, we have 7,200x is equal to 36m minus 25 squared. And therefore, x is equal to 36m minus 25 squared squared divided by 7,200. That should be our final answer for this question, and that should be a merit level grade to get to the final answer. Um, an achieved level grade should come if you're able to square both sides one time, so maybe up to this step here. Alright, oh, sorry, why do I still have this here? Okay, yeah, I was working this question out beforehand to make double checks, so I just ignore this. Apologies for that. I thought I, I thought I scrubbed it out. Okay. All right. So solve the equation z squared equals to i times modulus of z squared minus 4. All right. So it looks pretty interesting question. That's for the same. But we should start at our foundations, which is at first we should be saying that z equals to x plus iy. All right. So the basics right there. 
So in this case, it's just, just a simple question of um, simplifying both sides. So then we say imaginary equals imaginary, real equals real. And that's really it. There's nothing too much else to it. So we say x plus i y squared is equal to i times of modulus of z. Remember, modulus of z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So the square of the modulus is just x squared plus y squared minus 4. Let's expand the left-hand side here. So we have x squared plus 2yxi minus y squared is equal to i times of x squared plus y squared minus 4. And it doesn't actually show here, but since we only have the imaginary side, imaginary on the right-hand side, we can also say this is equal to plus 0. So therefore, we can say that the real is equal to the real, which is here, imaginary. Uh, so we have real, real, and that's real. And, we, and they can say that's equal to the imaginary and the imaginary. So therefore, using this information, we can say x squared minus y squared equals to 0. And we can say 2yx equals to x squared plus y squared minus 4. And therefore, we can say that 4 is equal to x squared minus 2yx plus y squared. Notice this is a perfect square on the right-hand side. So 4 is equal to x minus y squared x minus y therefore equals 2 plus or minus 2. Likewise, on for this equation, we can see this is the difference of two squares. So we can see that x minus y times x plus y, that is equal to 0. But since we know that x minus y, okay, let's say for the, for the condition, let's say x minus y equals to positive 2. So by definition, we know that since this is 2, this one must be 0. So 2 times 0 equals to 0. So therefore, x plus y equals to 0. And if we add these two expressions, we'll get 2x equals to 2. Therefore, x equals to 1. And y equals to negative 1. And if we say, let's say, the second case, which is x minus y equals to negative 2, we can say that x minus y equals to negative 2. And if this is negative 2, then, that also, then x plus y must be 0. So x plus y equals to 0. And if we add these again, then we'll get 2x equals to negative 2. x equals to negative 1. So therefore, this time, y equals to 1. So our two solutions would simply be, so our two solutions is z equals to 1 minus i and negative 1 plus y. So that's our two, uh, our two solutions for this equation. And that should be an excellent of the grade. To get a merit grade, um, if you only get one of the solutions, that's certainly a merit level grade. And if you only want an achieved level grade, if you're able to get these equations for real equals to real and imaginary equals to imaginary, that should be enough for an achieved grade. So getting this equation and getting this equation, that should be an achieved. Alright, so thank you for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thank you.